Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning and welcome to uh, the course introduction to interaction design. So, in the last uh, session we uh, saw a case study of one of my students and we saw how uh, she used the double diamond approach to identify the problem where the task given was to design a website for tourism uh, of Uttarakhand state. So, we saw how the process of problem identification and then uh, different uh, aspects of the uh, user interface uh, like the icons, logos, how that developed to come up, up together to form the final uh, output. So, uh, today we will be looking at the visual uh, interface uh, design and uh, uh, so, when we see uh, uh, art or uh, visual interface design or any other design discipline which deals with uh, design like uh, industrial design, interaction design. So, we can see that there are some uh, commonalities. Uh, we can see that some theories and uh, some frameworks may be quite similar. So, uh, art as we know is uh, has been evolving over the past many decades, many centuries. The first uh, incidences were of the cave paintings. So, we know that how uh, ancient the whole practice of expressing uh, oneself was in the form of art and whereas, uh, computers and the interface is relatively very uh, new concept. So, uh, although for an untrained eye the art that we see uh, may not make uh, you know uh, sense at times, but there is a certain structure, there is a certain hierarchy and certain use of elements that goes into it. The there are certain principles that make it uh, an interesting piece of art for us to uh, observe. So, whether it is uh, Da Vinci's work or Dali or uh, uh, Van Gogh. So, we will see that there is a system in the way they have uh, put the elements together, the way the colors have been selected. Um, so, it is not like any element has just been placed. Uh, in any random place, but there is an organized way in which the art has been created, so that it can communicate the meaning and we can as viewers uh, enjoy the art and uh, you know identify or perceive it the way uh, we may, because everybody may perceive them differently. But the difference between art and uh, uh, visual design broadly is that the artist is sort of reflecting his observation or feelings. So, it is it can tend to be a little bit more subjective, but whereas when it comes to the uh, designer or uh, designer who is creating say a visual interface or any kind of interaction between the uh, viewer and the uh, system. So, then they are they are not designing for themselves. So, it is not uh, you know, one's own subjective preferences or priorities really do not have any importance there. So, they are designing for people because the expectation is that a large number of uh, people will be using this particular interface. Uh, the area of uh, design, we will see that how the elements are also placed in a certain manner in a very uh, in a functional a manner in sort of a framework, so that the user is able to interact with them more uh, effectively. So, uh, when it comes to uh, aesthetics and usability, so there is always uh, sort of uh, uh, you know a uh, debate that what is more important, whether something should be more aesthetic or more usable. So, uh, both these terms go hand in hand in the sense that any interface which is very aesthetically pleasing, but it does not offer the ease of use or a good user experience to the user, then of course, the user will move forward maybe to another such application. 
uh, the opposite is also true where the the application website may be very functional may be very usable uh, very user friendly but aesthetics uh, may not be very uh, inviting or it may, may not be very appealing so in that case also uh, the uh, user may prefer another uh, app so so it is important for the designer to consider both of these together and uh, uh, come up with a design that fulfills the uh, efficiency and the also the 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 structural uh, aspect of it is taken care of so um, just like we have um, you know our syntax of language where we have a sent a uh, structure to a sentence to a paragraph to a book uh, so similarly when we are creating any user interface at that time also we have to follow certain uh, language some de design language we have to follow uh, just like i mentioned earlier that how from the area of art we have also we can say borrowed some of the concepts and theories so which sort of help one to align the requirements in a very systematic manner so in the uh, area of uh, uh, interface design also we have certain uh, building blocks when it comes to visual uh, design so we have shape size value hue orientation texture position so we will be taking them up in the next few slides so uh, the fundamental elements uh, of design like line point uh, shape so they form the backbone of the design language of uh, when it comes to the uh, interface design or interaction design or many other uh, communication uh, solutions so when we use uh, shape uh, with say uh, in conjunction with color so then the shape may reveal meaning and it makes the composition uh, more appealing to the audience so here we can see a poster on the left side where the uh, combination of uh, color and shape so dots have been used alternating blue and pink uh, dots have been used uh, and then th this creates an eye catching pattern so which draws the eye towards the pink uh, figure that is here and then towards the text so we can see how the basic uh, the first uh, element of uh, design which is the dot or the point how it is able to capture uh, the attention of the user and of course when it is uh, in conjunction with the color so it makes it even more appealing and there is a certain uh, a pattern certain meaning so we can also see the blue dots and maybe they are uh, the male uh, counterpart because this pink is the female so there are many ways in which we can uh, look at this design and uh, make our own assumptions about it but overall a uh, point being that it makes uh, the uh, art or the work that we see it could be an art it could be a poster it could be a website application but it makes it more appealing to us so uh, another important aspect here is the size so of course the bigger the size the more uh, it will be dominating in the uh, screen so for example we have a uh, image area so how big a space they occupy of course the i will move uh, first to what is uh, really pulling our eye so if it is big and heavy and dark and of course the color also plays an important role here because darker the color the heavier something appears to us the lighter it is the light color it appears to be lightweight so uh, so now there can be this hierarchy uh, and another place where this um, size helps mainly is in drawing the eye and also it dominates the area where it has been placed so now dominance is a principle of design which is wherein where do we want the uh, you know the viewer to uh, see uh, the area first where do we want his attention to be drawn on our artwork or our website so uh, what happens if there is dominance is missing if there is no dominance then we can see here in the diagram on the left that when there is no dominance then there is no direction because now the viewer doesn't know that where 
should I look? There is no uh, area which is uh, pulling the attention. So, when there is dominance here, in this particular case, it is in terms of these two horizontal lines. So, they are offering sort of a contrast, which we will talk about uh, in the next few slides also. So, now uh, this is uh, aiding the viewer in uh, glancing at this area, because there is something uh, some strong association he is seeing between these two lines rather than the vertical lines. Uh, similarly, when uh, we have a different shape or size, so here on the left we can see that all these sizes are almost uh, similar. So, there is nothing which is standing out, but on the right the minute we add a larger object, then the eye focuses there and then moves around the rest of the space. And uh, uh, lastly, that when even if we are using one dominant shape, but repetitive use of it also is not a very uh, good way of representing, because if there are too many of the uh, big uh, large shape, then again the, uh, the user will be confused that where is it I am supposed to look. So, there will not be anything to catch hold of their attention. So, in that case alternating the size or shape uh, can be an essential tool in uh, making sure that whatever we want to represent it is represented, but we have a certain flow induced in our work. So, value is, uh, is a very important uh, aspect when it comes to uh, interaction design in terms of how the user is. Uh, interacting with the uh, screen or the interface in front of them. So, it is known as the lightness or the uh, brightness. So, we can see here that generally we see that there will be a background and a foreground. Even when it comes to our website or application, so we have a background and a foreground. So, foreground is something that is in the front and background is what we perceive to be at the back and background is generally larger. So, if the foreground image for example, is light in color and we have a light background, so the visibility will be very poor. S just like you know when something is very dark, there is a dark background and dark uh, object on it. So, it is very difficult to make out the details. So, it is important that there is a certain level of contrast that we uh, bring about in the uh, elements that uh, uh, is on our uh, interface or in front of us. So, now this uh, work here is by uh, Albers, it is Albers uh, color studies. Albers uh, was a student of uh, Itin, who was a uh, master in Bauhaus uh, in early uh, 1900s. And you can see that uh, on the left, these two uh, green small squares. So, th they may be appearing to you as one is darker, one is lighter, but in, but in reality, both these small green squares are of the same exact hue and intensity. So, you can take a maybe a snapshot and put it together and see, but the reason why they are appearing different is because of the color they are being placed next to. So, it is not just the uh, only the choice of color that you know contrast has to be there, but also how it will behave when it is kept next to the other colors. So, how the background is on the left and what is the background on the right. So, that is making a lot of difference in how we are perceiving this green color. So, Albers did a lot of work in uh, understanding color and he uh, also conducted a study wherein uh, you know asked the students that come back with the color red. So, on the right we can see that how many different uh, color variations are there, because everybody is thinking of a different red. So, if I ask you to maybe pick a color blue, it will be probably ranging from sky blue to maybe a very deep uh, blue, because for everybody the mental image that we get when uh, I say blue, red, yellow. So, it may have those variations. So, it is a very uh, subjective uh, quality of color and it also uh, makes it very, the preference also is very, very dependent on this subjective quality. Here also in the bottom these three squares, we can see that how when we change the background, uh, although when the color remains the same. So, this color is same as this and this, but the minute it becomes the background, it uh, 
uh, starts looking or appearing like uh, a something else and when it is the in the foreground uh, where the light grey is the background and where black is the background if you compare these two here so this grey appears very different so which color will go in the foreground which in the background so that understanding for designers is really important at the same time value also helps in making something appear uh, very quickly to the eye so grabbing the attention which is very important when it comes to uh, design of interfaces so here in this one we can see that amongst all the black dots we have one gray dot and here immediately our eye goes on to the red so uh, that is the power of uh, contrast that how amongst all these black dots the red is uh, just pulling our eye towards it uh, at the same time uh, value is also very very useful in helping in the eye movement so we can see on the right that these dots which now are gray dark gray black they have various tones so we can see how they appear to be maybe flickering just like when on diwali we put those uh, diwali lights string lights and they don't uh, move but they are turning on off on off and then they give the uh, feeling or appearance that they are uh, you know sort of forming a pattern they are lighting up in a pattern similarly when we play around with the value of the color so we can uh, see that kind of a uh, uh, movement so the eye will move along because now each and every dot is full of interest there is something different that is being offered here something different that is being offered here 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 it is not the same monotonous black dot so uh, that is another uh, use for the uh, value so in this work here we can see that it's the same work but how the uh, contrasting uh, gray that has been used here how the overall look and feel of the work has completely changed so a uh, lot of iterations in this area uh, will help the designer come up with the best uh, possible option so now next uh, element is hue hue which is also uh, known as color so uh, hue is the uh, purest form of the pigment that is there now here we can see uh, in the color wheel that there are several of these uh, colors available here now this color when we see here for example this is the purest form of the color which means that it has not been adulterated with any other color there is no shade of gray in this so there so like we saw earlier that how uh, uh, you know gray is making a difference in the uh, visual uh, art that we see but here in the purest uh, hue it is purely devoid of any kind of uh, adulterant similarly in this green now this particular ring this ring here is that uh, which is known as the tint so tint is when we take the purest color or the hue and we add little bit of white to it so when we keep on adding a little bit of white so the color keeps on becoming lighter 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 in color and till the point that it reaches the color white similarly uh, the uh, the opposite of it is the tone this is the tone this is the tint tone or the shade so in the uh, shade what happens is that when we add a little bit of black to the pure hue so it becomes a little duller and then we keep on adding black to it it keeps on uh, you know changing its uh, outlook from a bright yellow now it is becoming darker and darker till the point it reaches black so this is the whole range of tints and shades now this is the itin's color wheel and itin was the mentor of albers that we saw earlier and itin is considered to be a master in the area of uh, colors an expert in the area of uh, uh, colors and he also taught at bauhaus so uh, itin's sort of Uh, mentioned that there are many combinations there are many such uh, you know colors that when they are put together they form a certain uh, sort of sense and which the designers or artists they prefer them but he also was one of the 
first people to mention that how the per personal preferences or the subjectivity of the color is uh, important and so as the context. Because if we see the context of say the color red, now in some cultures the red color is considered to be very auspicious, very lucky and people wear uh, red in weddings. But in some other cultures it is it stands for danger or dangerous. So, we associate the color red with several of these meanings. Similarly, the color white in some cultures uh, people wear wedding gowns uh, of white color, but in other cultures uh, people wear white when uh, there is some inauspicious uh, activity that has happened. So, we can see that how the designer has to be very mindful that what is the context in which uh, he is designing, who is the audience and uh, what, uh, how do they perceive certain colors from the lens of their particular culture. Now, this is uh, an artwork and we can see that how this has uh, such rich uh, hues. It has a lot of uh, colors put together, but still it does not seem very busy. So, what is, uh, how has that balance been created? Maybe it is the addition of white because of which it appears to sort of balance it out. So, uh, we can still use a number of colors, but we one has to be very careful that are we overdoing it or uh, when do we stop adding too many colors. Now, in an interface, because we want the user to uh, focus and for this the color is a very uh, strong uh, feature because it takes us one twentieth of a second to form an opinion. That is how quickly the color can uh, sort of influence our uh, preferences. So, for the designer to uh, use it in order to grab their attention, so they have to know that uh, which color and how much. If we use too much, if we use too many colors, so again the purpose may get defeated. So, uh, so that uh, understanding that balance is really important when it comes to the use of colors in the interfaces. Now, this is another interesting uh, poster and here we can see that how the color has sort of helped uh, create that movement. So, we can actually feel that the body is jerking along the uh, jazz music probably. So, uh, how these bits and pieces that are flying, how they are sort of uh, aiding in the movement of this person. So, color can be a very strong uh, uh, tool for the designer and how you can see the color palette. Maybe you can go back to the color wheel and see that which color palette has been used here. Another uh, maybe a very uh, good approach to use color is to uh, in case someone is starting out or they are unsure that what dominant color can be there in the color palette. So, we have, dis we have discussed earlier the uh, mood board and uh, slightly the color palette also. So, to decide a color palette there are many ways there are also many uh, softwares available online these days which help one choose the colors and put them together to see how they will appear. So, one can choose say a dominant color here this is a dominant color sub dominant or subordinate and the accent color. So, uh, the, this is the proportion in which this whole scheme will be used. So, dominant will be used in the majority of the surface or majority of the space then the subordinate lesser and accent only in some uh, important places. So, these are two examples of uh, how the color schemes uh, you know can be selected and pink can be used as an accent for just grabbing the attention. So, it will all depend on the purpose of the uh, website for example, what is the purpose of it? Is it for yoga? Is it for adventure sports? So, depending on that the color scheme, the dominant, subordinate and the uh, accent will change. So, on the left here is an example from a book where uh, the maybe you can identify that what are the dominant, subdominant and subordinate colors that have been used here. So, uh, we can see that orange is the dominant color, we can see it here in the text, we can see it here in this large uh, equation and then we have uh, uh, yellow and then we have uh, the black. So, how the uh, and white and how the designer has uh, judiciously used 
uh, these colors and they are not overpowering and they are just you know just helping in uh, catch the attention. So, for example, this yellow squares, so they are not in the text, but they are framing the image in such a way that uh, the viewer is looking at the image. So, they are catching the detail of the photo which is here black and white, but still the yellow squares help us focus on the image. So, maybe uh, we can also try to uh, maybe you all can try to uh, find out that what is the uh, dominant subdominant and the uh, accent color in this particular image. So, the orientation uh, is basically how are we orienting our uh, say uh, even our interface or the elements of the interface. Now, one of the initial elements of design when we begin is the image area or the picture plane. I will just quickly uh, talk about it that if we have a square image area or a picture plane, then what happens is that our eye is moving along the breadth, I, our eye is moving along the height, but both of these are equal. The length and the breadth of a square is equal. So, there is no direction really for the eye to go into, but when we have a rectangular uh, image area picture plane, then we have a length and then we have a uh, width. So, the this is not equal, they both are not equal to each other. So, in this case the eye gets a direction to move. So, if it is uh, placed say uh, in landscape position, then the eye will move along the horizontal line. If it is placed in the portrait or vertical format, then the eye will move top to bottom. And if you notice the interfaces that are around us, they will usually be rectangular. So, you will rarely uh, see a square uh, interface. Uh, there may be, but uh, generally I mean you can reflect back and see that what uh, what is a phone look like, what does um, you know the computer screen or tablet look like. So, also when we are placing the elements now onto this particular image area. So, again we can go back to our elements of design wherein uh, the lines that how the lines signify uh, certain movements. So, when we have horizontal lines or the line can also mean that anything that is placed horizontally. So, it is more stable, it is uh, more balanced as opposed to something that is. So, this is more uh, stable. If we have something which is standing vertically, this is uh, upright in attention position and when we have something diagonal, so that shows the movement. So, just like uh, we have these ice uh, skaters, so when they are uh, skating, so they are their body is in the diagonal position. So, we feel that they might just topple over, but they do not, but they, that thrill is there that you know they might fall. So, that uh, uncertainty is there which keeps the person hooked to the whole uh, event. So, similarly, how are we planning to orient our work? So, are we using the diagonal uh, line or are we uh, you know using vertical columns, are we using uh, breaking it up? So, we will also see this a little bit more later when we talk about the grids or the layout. So, texture uh, so is something you know smooth, rough. So, texture helps us uh, see that, it helps us understand or uh, get a feel of it because uh, we are not able to touch it in three dimension, we are looking at it in 2 D, but the information that we are getting when there is some sort of a texture, we get the th uh, three dimensional feel of it. And although the texture takes a, a number of pixels, but still uh, texture also communicates a lot to the user. So, when we are using any for example, say a tangible uh, product. So, for example, uh, this uh, pen itself that uh, where the button is. So, here there is some texture is different. So, I know. So, it is telling the there is a affordance in this product which is telling me that this needs to be pressed or the grip I need to grip it in a certain manner to get uh, which is rubberized here. So, similarly, uh, when we are uh, in the zone of the interface, there also the buttons if they are for example, uh, textured 
or they have some uh, kind of uh, lines on them. So, we know that we have to sort of drag them or pull them and when they are like say they have beveled edges or they have some drop shadows then that means that these buttons probably need to be clicked. So, the appearance also uh, tells us that how this particular product uh, needs to be interacted with. So, position is uh, the arrangement and placement of the elements within the layout or the composition. So, you can see here three different uh, uh, examples are there one of a mobile tablet and desktop and all of them sort of provide us with a very different sort of a space. So, and then they all come with their own uh, uh, challenges and their own uh, advantages. So, where in a desktop we have uh, more space, so we can uh, position, we have much more free hand in putting a lot of information there because of the real estate being much larger there as compared to the mobile. But the challenge is also to ensure that the user is able to locate because now the surface is large. So, uh, where, how does he move around to identify what he is looking for? So, uh, but then it also gives the freedom to sort of uh, organize the layout in a hierarchy whether we are using the modular system or the columns or the hierarchical. So, it gives the user that uh, freedom, the designer that freedom that they can sort of uh, organize uh, them in that uh, manner. In the phone for example, as you can see in this diagram also that how these all the functions are like stacked together. because now, here the scrolling motion will be used quite a bit as opposed to the uh, desktop. So, what will come in the first page, what how much do we scroll to go to the next. So, all those uh, decisions the designer will have to take. So, once we land on the mobile for example, so what should be in the top, what should, what should come in the top, what is the most important information that uh, one should not have to scroll down to uh, to get to. So, all those decisions become very important when the positioning uh, uh, changes, when these uh, the whole space changes. So, coming to the principles of uh, visual interface design. So, uh, just like uh, in other areas like even art there are certain principles, uh, visual principles, gestalt principles and others. So, similarly in visual interface design what are those certain principles that we used to uh, see. So, uh, there are certain ways and certain you know steps that the designer can take which will help make the experience for the user uh, very much enhanced. So, some techniques are that uh, hierarchy is important that how are we putting or grouping the elements together so that there is a clear hierarchy because it is then easier for the user to spot what it is they want to uh, interact with first. Then the other is that how to give the structure and flow. So, just like you know in a story there is a certain flow that uh, Ram went to the jungle then Sita uh, got kidnapped. So, when that has a flow, so similarly in the interaction also there has to be a flow. If I am attempting something and then there is a break in it and then it is somewhere else. So, that is going to give me a very poor uh, experience because I will be left confused that what happened, why, how, where is this, how do I search for it. So, and since you are focusing on the experience and also the uh, efficiency, so it becomes very important that we follow the structure uh, very well. Then. Uh, also, the imagery, if you are using any type of images, you are using any type of illustrations or any type of even I would say buttons and icons and color. So, they have to have a consistency, they cannot, we cannot have one thing on one page and something else on the other page. So, that, uh, that connectivity has to be maintained. So, if there is a color palette, so on one page you, one has to follow the color palette, on second page we cannot just come up with a new dominant subordinate and uh, accent colors. That can happen in certain cases also that that sort of is a possibility, but for that also it has to somehow link with something. There has to be some element which is following through the entire uh, story which is linking it together. The next is the style and function 
so of course, the style and function they both have to go hand in hand together for the interface uh, and the interaction to be seamless and uh, avoid visual noise and clutter. So, of course, uh, the uh, too much of something, too much of a certain color, too much of a certain shape, too much of uh, the same image also uh, will not really help in uh, grabbing the attention or keeping the attention of the user. So, we have to be careful that how much of what needs to be used. So, coming to the hierarchy uh, as we can see here that how there is a thick line then thinner then thinner and much thinner and how the color is also changing the hue is changing. So, based on the uh, scenario, so we have to determine which controls and the pieces of data user needs to understand instantly that when a user is visiting our website or our application, what is it that they are looking for, what is it that they would want to find immediately. So, that uh, uh, we have to determine and then what would they look for next. So, for example, if I am already a user, I would probably want to identify login for example. So, if I am going to, uh, if I cannot find login and I am I am looking around for it. So, so that will leave me maybe frustrated. So, what is it I will do first? What is it I will do second? So, scenarios need to be created which we have discussed earlier also that how in what scenario. Uh, so, scenario 1 uh, this action needs to be taken. Scenario 2 now the user wants to take this action. Scenario 3. So, in so then we come to know that uh, how do we uh, you know uh, prepare the hierarchy of our visual elements including color and shape, size, everything. So, that the user is able to identify uh, based on their priority the particular elements. Then establishing a relationship. So, the elements need to have some sort of a relationship. They cannot be like you know we cannot have five different stories in one place, there has to be sort of a link between the elements. So, that is what the elements are doing, they are creating a whole story for us. So, we cannot have uh, 5, 10 different things happening where there is no connection between them. So, the elements have to be uh, uh, connected, a relationship needs to be formed and that will help in the visual hierarchy, it will help in the consistency, in the usability uh, factor of the application or website and the uh, uh, visual balance will also be maintained as well as the clarity for the user. So, all these uh, need to be taken into um, uh, account and also we cannot forget that the emotional impact that we have talked about in the earlier lecture also that how the user needs to connect emotionally. So, uh, we have to keep that in mind also that how will our work emotionally impact the user. Now, alignment and uh, a grid is probably one of the most important things to begin with. So, if uh, we have a nice aligned and uh, properly designed layout, then uh, we have to place our elements there. So, we cannot you know think of the layout at the end uh, of the whole process, because then we will be left with some sort of a confusion. Now, there are broadly three types of layouts uh, that we use. So, one is the modular layout, where we have uh, these different modules in a uh, layout. Then we have the column. So, let me just draw this one more time. So, you can think of modules like different modules like this, where the, the we have gutters in between. So, this, this gutter is a white space here and horizontally as well. So, this gutter along with the, the periphery of the uh, layout will form the background. So, which we have discussed that how background and foreground that relationship is very important. So, it will form the background and the whatever is here will be the foreground. Okay. So, now in the modular as we know the modules that uh, modules can just click the same module like uh, stackable chairs for example, one chair on top of the other. Similarly, in these modules we can have, we can take these individual modules and put some information here or we can also 
combine these modules. So, we can take two of them together or we can take three of them vertically, but this needs to be uh, sort of uh, thought out before and we cannot like change this when we go to the next page. So, in because the uh, viewer will expect something like for example, if I have kept say I have kept my button here some important button is here. So, the user will uh, expect that in when they scroll down they will find another important meaningful button in the same place. So, if it is not there then they will be left confused. So, we have to uh, ensure that this grid that we are using this layout we are using is sort of consistent. The other is the, the column uh, layout where we have columns the information is in uh, the columns vertically and it can also be laid out horizontally. So, the information is displayed horizontally or vertically uh, that is another way to do it and the th a third is the hierarchical where we sort of make a hierarchy of uh, elements of the spaces and uh, that the more important information will come here then we will have some image here maybe some larger image here, some text here, some uh, uh, more text here. So, uh, depending on our uh, what we are designing for, so the layout can be chosen and but the it should be uh, considered that we should not mix too many layouts because that is just going to break the readability of our uh, work. So, from one to the other the when the grids change the user will be uh, left confused. Now, uh, symmetrical and asymmetrical uh, balance. So, uh, like for example, if you have seen the Taj Mahal. So, Taj Mahal is a symmetrical structure. So, you see it from the entrance, uh, we can draw a line through the middle of it, both the parts will be same. There are many other such symmetrical, uh, uh, you know, um, structures, buildings, even in paintings we see some sort of a, a symmetry at times. So, uh, and layout also like here on the left we can see that this is a symmetrical layout. Now, symmetrical layout uh, is a good uh, uh, way to sort of uh, portray our work, nothing wrong with that. But in the symmetrical balance where if we draw a line like here we have both sides are exactly the same. Then what happens is that it can lead to some uh, monotony, it can lead to um, the layout not being very excited. So, there is no uh, dominant uh, element that is pulling our attention. But when we have an asymmetrical balance, which means that it still needs to be balanced uh, somewhat, it cannot whether it is with the shape, with color, with text, with any other element, but there it is balanced. So, here we can see that how they are balancing each other uh, diagonally and there may be some text here may be. So, now in this particular case it is not something which is very expected, it is not something that is uh, that somebody will predict not predictable. So, something that will give us a little bit of an excitement suddenly something comes here or uh, you know, but, uh, but we have to keep a fine balance between that also because earlier slide we saw that how layout is important and how we cannot keep on changing the layout. But in the same layout uh, the image can keep on shifting the place, we can take for example, four of those modules place an image there, but on the other uh, when we scroll down we can use the other four uh, you know modules for example. So, it is up to the designer how they want to treat it, but the uh, asymmetrical balance makes the worker just a little bit more exciting uh, to uh, see because it becomes less predictable. So, here we can see two examples, two websites. So, uh, on the left we can see how the information is symmetrically placed if we draw a line we will cut across equally both sides. Uh, so, it is probably it is for uh, you know some very calm uh, activity, 
on the right we can see a yoga studio, but it uh, appears to be a very dynamic uh, yoga studio, because the image that is here and I discussed the skaters earlier that how this body is in a position where it may topple over. So, uh, now this is an example of how the uh, elements have been placed asymmetrically, because the image is here, then we have the text here talking about it, whereas here we on the left we have uh, this equivalent to this. Now, all through our uh, um, the website, whether it is website or whatever interaction it is. So, uh, one has to think that how is the user going to uh, approach our work, how are they going to read our work, how are they going to move around in our work. Like I said earlier that the, the you know Sita cannot be kidnapped before the Ram even goes to the forest. So, we cannot make the user find something at the bottom and then come up and continue working. So, uh, so what is the logical sequence, how will the information be displayed, what kind of steps the user will need to take and how will he uh, move about these steps. So, all of this needs to be uh, considered. So, now this is a study uh, which was done by the Norman group and uh, one technique the, uh, which is used by a lot of web developers is of eye tracking, but how is the user actually looking at their website. So, it gives us very uh, valuable insights that uh, what is the way in which the human eye uh, you know starts looking at uh, the text or starts reading or takes the information of the website in. So, it is also dependent on the culture, because uh, in some cultures, in some uh, areas of the world, we read left to right, but in some uh, areas, uh, people read right to left. So, who are we designing for also needs to be considered. If we are, uh, you know, making a laptop and uh, uh, or any so sort of a document, word uh, software for example, but the one is forced to write uh, left to right, then people who uh, write right to left, then for them it becomes unusable. Anyway, so uh, eye tracking was used here and so what it showed was, you can see that when humans are reading uh, any text, uh, document or website, so they read in an F pattern. So, what that means is that they will st start from the left, they will go towards the right then they will come back here and then they will scan and then they will uh, follow like that. So, you can see a little f uh, following uh, forming here and similarly here also. So, we can see the f forming here. So, that is how uh, the humans uh, read. So, uh, eye tracking actually has been used, uh, it is a very useful tool like even in uh, during the time when Japan was in war with uh, USA. So, at that time also uh, because lot of men were being killed by the gunshot to the head. So, what they did was that they designed their uniform in such a way that the, the flag of the uh, Japan which is the red dot, it was on their chest area. So, now in, in the middle of the jungle when everything is green and they are wearing a uniform or their uh, army uh, uniform with red on their chest. So, the enemy uh, will immediately grab uh, the red color and they will shoot. So, uh, the person will get wounded, the soldier will get wounded, but he will not die, because the chest has been hit. So, it can still be treated, but if the bullet goes to the head, so uh, the survival chances are almost next to 0. So, uh, that is how uh, you know we have uh, evolved and we have tried to understand that what uh, uh, and how the user or the viewer perceives uh, things or what catches their attention and how can we grab their attention, how can uh, from you know instead of this, how can we make them see this. So, the same uh, uh, you know information can be applied here with the help of uh, eye tracking and other uh, some systems, we can uh, eff efficiently see that if this is the pattern the user is using to read, then maybe we should place this important information in this segment and the secondary information here and tertiary information in the place where they will look uh, next. So, um, 
uh, with this uh, we will uh, stop here today and uh, in the next lecture we will uh, talk about some elements of uh, a user interface. So, I will see you in the next session. Thanks.